Hey everyone, welcome back to the Golf House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny, and welcome to September. <laughs> this is my first Friday update in September, and September is actually preparedness month. So, during preparedness month, we're coming into the winter months, um, maybe a little more sick season. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, layoffs, you know, plus we've got holidays. You never know what's going to happen. Anyway, September, September is an excellent month to um, start getting prepared if you're not already. And there is lots of videos out there on preparedness. And there's, there's a lot of people who are so organized and do a really good job. And I just want to point out, I am not one of those really organized people. I have, lot, I have lots of stash. Um, I do have a fully stocked pantry and, you know, my pantry items are organized. I tend to focus more on food and in, in that kind of thing and where I'm going to put it and organize it and things like that. What I do not focus on, and I should, and I am going to be better, and that's what I'm going to focus on this month, is um, being more organized with paperwork. People have amazing emergency binders. I watched a ton of videos on it yesterday, thinking, okay, do, do you know, should, should I have one binder with everything in it, you know? Um, some people have binders where they have a pull-out bag with all their important things, you know, like, their driver's license, social security cards, um, money, that kind of thing. And, and some people have this big binder with just house stuff. And then I'm thinking, wow, I'm gonna end up with lots of binders. You know, you have one with emergency for your house stuff. You, you have a, a pantry binder that has your inventory and everything you need in it. Um, <laughs> I tend to be an overdoer and an overthinker and that is why I haven't done anything because it's a lot of work for me but I'm going to do it. Um, so I just want to show you, <laughs> this is my, uh, <laughs> some of these I, uh, are printables, some things I've printed out, some things um, I have written out, but there are, I have a lot of information in here that I go by. I know where it is and I actually keep this stack on the bottom shelf in my pantry, but it's a whole stack of crap paperwork that is not organized. So um, I am going to spend September and probably not, you know, every day doing something, but um, maybe I will pick one day a week to work on actually putting my stuff together in a binder. So here's my thought on it. Instead of having one huge binder that either A, you're picking up this whole binder and running out the door that <clears throat> if you need it like in your bug out bag, um, rather than doing that and then bringing a whole bunch of information that may not be that useful, I think I'm gonna make some smaller ones. So I think I will make number one, the emergency binder red that you would keep your um, you know, your house paperwork in, um, your insurance policies, your social security cards, copies of your driver's license, you know, um, vital records, bank accounts, credit cards, just in case, you know, you never know if something happens. Uh, you don't have your wallet or your purse, but you've got copies of everything. So um, I think I will make that a little bit smaller of a binder, right? And then I need to make a pantry binder because I finally need to get organized and I really need to do some inventory because I have not done any inventory on what I have. I'm, I'm here all day so I pretty much know what I have, but um, like these freezers are full of meat that I haven't canned yet and I keep buying it because I keep get finding such good prices and I'm a sucker for a good sale and an excellent haul, so I buy a lot of stuff. Um, so I have a lot of meat in here, but I really need to take inventory of exactly what I have and what I have in my shelves back there. Um, soon, my mother-in-law will be moving in with us, and when she does, that room, that spare room that my pantry is in, is my pantry is going to have to go away. So I have to make uh, plans, and I have to build out a pantry outside until I can build the addition onto my house that I have plans for. But you know, money <laughs> gets in the way of everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I am, I'm not going to say I'm cheap, 
but I'm a definite penny pincher and I always will find a good deal and I don't do anything and or purchase anything unless it's on sale, a good deal, or I have a coupon, or I can trade services with somebody. Um, so, you know, we're looking at this addition out of the house and I'm thinking, okay, concrete's the most expensive thing. So I'm thinking I need to find somebody who does concrete work that needs maybe electrical services because my husband's an electrician. So, you know, that kind of thing. I love the barter system. So anyway, that being said, this pantry has to be put outside. And outside, my husband has his office in the, um, what do you call it? It's like a storage crate. I call it a crate. I send him to his crate a lot. Um, <laughs> he's crate trained. <laughs> oh gosh, what do you call it? A storage container. It's a big storage container that we had dropped off here. I know it's been in my videos before, but we put his office out there. Anyway, it's partially framed. It got to be summer and it got to be too hot, so we did not, um, it just needs to finish being framed out, which won't take much, and it needs to be uh, insulated. So my son is going to do that in the next month. We're waiting for the cool down a little bit because it's just too hot here, especially in the crate. Um, so when it starts cooling down, he'll go in there and put the insulation, uh, finish out the framing and do the insulation. And then we are going to um, either move these metal racks out there or purchase new ones for out there. And that will be the, um, that'll be the new pantry. So mine is a workable pantry and inside my workable pantry I do have some long-term storage items you know I've got the buckets um, it kind of stays in the same pantry I don't I don't separate them um, I don't have enough space for that but so on one wall I'll put like the the long-term storage that we don't really touch or work out of um, other than maybe rotating the stock and then um, the rest of it will be regular pantry and I'm looking into um, putting a couple more shelves over here so that this whole kitchen can be, or the, I'm sorry, this whole dining room will be part of the usable kitchen and pantry, and I'll keep canned goods in here too. You know, like keep a certain amount in here and the rest out there for storage, and then and then I'm going to need like a metal grocery basket, right, to go out there and grocery shop. <laughs> so that is my plan for my new pantry. Um, so hopefully sometime within the next week, it's going to be really hot this weekend, so I don't know about this weekend, but sometime within the next week, um, I need to go in there and clear some stuff out. Uh, my husband did take a lot of stuff out of there, but I need to get the rest of we We need to get the rest of the stuff out of there. And um, they need to start finishing framing this so that we can get this going. Um, so I will probably vlog some of that for you, um, the making of the new pantry out there. And inventory everything along the way so that's probably when I'll do a big inventory but I want to say I was looking online yesterday last night and there are so many and I did I bring any in here okay there are so many worksheets out there that are printables um, that you know th that are free any website you go to has free printable um, worksheets on food pantry inventory some of them are downloads to for Excel, um, things like that. So you, there are some paid versions and there's some free versions. And there's a lot of free versions I found last night. Or you could just make your own. I mean, if you've got Excel, totally make your own. You can just kind of look at what they have done to see how you like it formulated. Because there's a lot of things that I look at and I think, you know, I would formulate it a little bit differently. And I do. So I need to make my own and I'm going to. Um, but I did print out a couple examples so I can kind of look at it and see this one doesn't really have enough for me But that's okay. I'm gonna I'll make my own and so I'm going to make a pantry binder as well and the pantry binder will be um, inventory on what I have and I did uh, Lisa over at Sutton's days has her pantry binder and she puts hers into sleeves and then she uses a marker that you can um, actually wipe off and change the numbers and I think that is an excellent idea so I'll probably do that I don't I think I'll laminate it laminate the inventory sheet and put holes in it and put it in the binder that way I can write on it and then erase it I think that is an, an excellent idea rather than printing off multiple versions I love that so I'm going to do that with what I have in my pantry um, and I also really need to make a kitchen binder 
So I have lots of recipe books. Most of my recipes, oddly enough, I think I've showed you how disorganized I am. Um, most of my recipes are in notebooks like this. I probably have 25 of these things in there full of my handwritten recipes with no organization. And then some of them I have just thrown into um, <laughs> binders and I have, I don't know, 12 binders, 12 binders with handwritten recipes that I've just finally punched holes in and stuck them in the binders because they're stuff that I use a lot, often. So I do have a recipe binder with nothing but cakes, one has desserts, one has salads and dressings and soups, one has <laughs> main dishes, one has bread, one has Halloween food, one has um, my Thanksgiving recipes in it. So here's the thing. So I'm thinking, you know, when I'm in the kitchen all the time and I make the same recipes most of the time so every week I make bread twice a week usually about four loaves of just plain basic white sandwich bread because my grandkids love it my husband loves it and um, you know I have most of it memorized but with everything I got going on there's no way I'm gonna just keep everything memorized and not make a mistake and forget to put something in there so I thought about doing you know writing them out on little cards and laminating them and then putting them in my little um, um, little recipe box because I have that and then I thought you know what a kitchen binder would be better so I am going to make also a kitchen binder and in my kitchen binder I've outlined it for you because you know kitchen's the most important thing to me um, I will put in there the recipes that I use all the time for bread for my white bread for my dinner rolls um, tortillas flour tortillas I know that recipe by heart, but just in case, I will put it in my kitchen binder. Also for the corn tortillas, those are things that I make all the time. Um, dressings, you know, the ranch dressing with my ranch dressing mix. I'll probably put my mix and how to make the dressing in my kitchen binder because it's something that I make weekly. Um, so anything, uh, pie crust. Pie crust is something that I use for more than just pies, and I, I use that pie crust all the time, so I'll probably put that in there. My, um, my buttermilk biscuit recipe, I make those every week, so I'll put that in there. So I don't want to necessarily put, and I've seen a lot of people make kitchen binders and have meal plans in the front um, of the book, and then recipes you know all kinds of recipes and recipes that they want to try I don't necessarily want to do that because I don't want to fill it with mumbo jumbo I have a cupboard full of recipes I just want the basics that I use every week in there so that is what I'm gonna put in there also um, what I want to put in there are the only recipes I will keep in that kitchen book are family favorites something that I make all the time um, that way, you know, if something happens, my kids have exactly what I make all the time. It would be right there. Um, so I will put something that I make. If I make it more than twice a month, I will I will put it in that book for for the kids, you know, or what if I don't remember what I put in something for some reason? Who knows? Menopause, right? <laughs> um, also, spice blends. You know, when you run out of things, um, rubs if you like a rub you make it all the time put the recipe in there maybe your kids and family love it and uh you're not there they want to make it it's you, everything's right there and you'll point out where your kitchen binder is to everybody so you know your favorite rubs um which leads me into one of the things the main things that i want to talk to you about today not just um binders but uh substitutions that's something that you that's hardly ever talked about and um, I notice when people are putting their books together for your pantry goods, you know, we, we stock all these things, we have all these things, some things we don't stock. I mean, all of us aren't bakers, right? But what if we do want to bake something and we don't have the right stuff? Um, so substitutions, a page of, or it's going to be a few pages, believe me, of substitutions. I got to thinking about it and I use substitutions a lot. If I run out of something, I'm not running to the store. I will substitute it out. And let me tell you, it's really important to know the substitutions. Um, like a cup of powdered sugar. You would use one cup of granulated sugar and a tablespoon of cornstarch. And you just put it right into your um, food processor and whirl it. And then you've got powdered sugar. Um, also, cake flour. You have one cup of all-purpose flour. You take out two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and you put in two tablespoons of cornstarch. And then you just make sure that you um, sift it 
couple times over because uh, cake flour is light and fluffy. So um, that is a great substitution for cake flour. And I use that probably more often than I buy cake flour and it works out just fine. I see no reason to pay the extra money for cake flour. And again, I'm cheap, so I don't buy it. I make it. Um, Self-rising flour. Self-rising flour, one cup of all-purpose flour. You take away two teaspoons and you put in one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. And then again, you know, make sure that you um, sift it really well together. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, eggs. Do you know how many egg substitutes there are? If you are baking, you can substitute for one egg, you can substitute um, two tablespoons of mayonnaise. You can substitute a half a teaspoon of baking soda with a tablespoon of vinegar, or two tablespoons of water and a teaspoon of oil and two teaspoons of baking powder. Um, you can do three tablespoons of hot water with one tablespoon of flax or chia seeds, either one of those. It'll, it'll kind of goop up and um, you can use that for egg substitute, plus that's healthy. Um, you can use a half a banana, a quarter cup of applesauce. You can use three and a half tablespoons of gelatin blend, you know, blend with water. Um, and that kind of goops up. You can use that for egg substitute. But if you are in your pantry in, I do stock like egg from Thrive. Um, you can stock meringue powder. You can get egg substitute dried. You can freeze your eggs. Make sure you have that kind of stuff. But if you run out, those are things that you can use. It's kind of nice just to have them in your book, this substitution page. Um, chocolate, uh, you know, you can use three tablespoons of cocoa, unsweetened cocoa, and a tablespoon of oil or butter. Um, and that, you know, is like melted chocolate. So then you can use it for whatever recipe that you're gonna use it for. Um, un unsweetened chocolate, that is. <laughs> So you're gonna need to add sugar to it, so for whatever recipe. Buttermilk, a cup of milk with um, a tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar. Um, also, you can do, if you don't have any fresh milk on hand, you can do one cup of water, a half a cup of powdered milk, and a tablespoon of vinegar or lemon juice. Um, if you're baking and you don't have butter, you can use half a cup of applesauce, you can use one cup of smashed avocado, you can use a half a cup of uh, Greek yogurt if you've got yogurt, or you can use butter powder um, if you've got butter powder. I just got some, I just ordered some butter powder and some sour cream powder to put back on my shelf for, uh, for Thrive. Um, brown sugar, one cup of white sugar, if you use one cup of white sugar, put it in your mixer and put one tablespoon of molasses in there, then you've got light brown sugar. If you use two tablespoons of molasses and one cup of granulated sugar, you have dark brown sugar. Um, milk. If you need a cup of milk, you can do a half a cup of evaporated milk and a half a cup of water. A little canned milk. You can use powdered milk, which hopefully we're all stocking a little powdered milk. Um, you can use a cup of water, half a cup of uh, the powdered milk. Um, I have oops, books and books on substitutes because I think it's so important. Uh, and you know what, I'm probably gonna write this out on my um, blog for you just because you can go to so many different websites and there's all kinds of substitutions and things like that, but trying to put them all together, I have books and books here, so I think I might write an article um, maybe on Sunday on my blog for substitutions because there are so many. Um, if you need to make evaporated milk, you can use a cup of water and two thirds a cup of powdered milk, and that'll be a little bit thicker. You need to make sweetened condensed milk, a cup of powdered milk, a half a cup of hot water, and a cup of sugar, and then you can replace your sweetened condensed milk. Um, you can even make whipped cream out of evaporated milk. Um, so it just, there's so many substitution, it's insane. Anyway, um, spice blends. If you run out of pumpkin pie spice, you can make your own pumpkin pie spice blend. You can make your own allspice blend. Even though allspice is a berry, you can come close with the flavors. Um, allspice is one of those things I rarely use. I don't know why. I don't, it's not my favorite. I prefer to use the cinnamon and clove and nutmeg and do it all myself. 
but making up your spice blends, you know, your taco seasoning, your ranch powder. I showed you how to, I make my ranch powder, um, chili seasoning, you know, keep, just mix up your chili seasonings. Then you don't have to have any, you know, you have to purchase packets. You don't have to, um, worry about the silicone and all that cr other crud that's in it that you don't really want. Um, but there's there's recipes for everything, and I'll probably put some of my blends up there. But like I said, I need to get organized so bad. Everything is just written, or I've gotten stuff. I got this really cool book from um, the LDS Cannery, and I forgot I had the book. And then the other day, yesterday, it wasn't the other day, it was yesterday, I picked up all my packet of stuff that I have sitting on my bottom shelf for... Uh, emergency purposes <laughs> this should be actually an emergency binder for inventory in the, the um, canning closet but I found this book and in this book there is one page of substitutions um, it doesn't have a ton but it has a few in it um, but the rest of the book is all telling you um, how to store the stuff and um, how long things will last, which is really important. You can write this out yourself if you like, or you can find a website to tell you that. And then there is a whole bunch of recipes in here to be made with um, like powdered eggs, um, powdered milk, um, you know, any, any dried ingredient, any dried storage item that you may have, this book tells you how you can use it. So I just think that that's a cool, um, it's a cool book and it's, it's a basic food storage cookbook with recipes and tips. Anyway, so if you can get your hands on something like this, it's, it's a great thing to have. Um, gosh. So getting organized. Um, also being prep timber, it is gardening month for me. Um, September, my summer garden did not do well. In fact, all my tomato plants died. I didn't get any tomatoes. Um, I used to do more hydroponics and this is the first year we're doing um, raised garden beds in a really long time and it's going to be a whole new learning curve. I completely forgot um, because hydroponics is so easy. Uh, and my husband gave it too much shade. It just, it killed everything. So anyway, tomorrow, whether it's hot or not, I'll try to get out there first thing in the morning. I need to go out there and pull all the dead plants out. And I'm going to, I've got a couple bags of soil, so I'm going to put those fresh soil in and get some more. Um, I did get a new composting barrel, so I want to put some of that composting stuff, the things that I've been saving, into, um, into the boxes too and kind of stir everything up and get it ready. Um, another thing with garden planning. If you haven't planned a garden or if you are going to, you plan to, there are some great places, what did I do with it, to um, get information from. I actually found another YouTube channel and she has a website too. Um, she does gardening in Arizona and she's a master gardener in Arizona. So great because I could totally use some tips and advice from a master gardener, let me tell you. But on her website and I printed it out, She's got Arizona low desert. Um, so this is a to-do list for September. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read it to you. <laughs> a to-do list for September. So in here, you know, she's got to make sure that you fertilize your fruit trees. I have two fruit trees back there. Um, make sure that you, you know, prune your herbs back, things like that. And then the herbs will regrow because here in Arizona, we have year-round growing season in our low desert. Um, and then she's got what vegetables to plant and put in the garden in September. So some of the spring vegetables will go in um, in September and they'll go through the winter like uh, carrots and I think cabbage, that kind of thing. They will go in and that'll be harvested in the spring. So I need to, I've got my box kind of separated so I need to do, you know, what I'm going to be harvesting in the spring garden and just kind of make sure and then I need to get my herb boxes filled. So. Um, the gardening I will be working on this weekend. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> I just didn't show it all summer because it just was a horrible mess. And um, it's embarrassing, man. <laughs> so I'm going to be working on that this weekend too. So that's another thing for prep timber that I'm going to be working on. Um, so hopefully you all have plans, you know, to start something, uh, maybe get organized like me. My main goal is organization and now, um, 
I'm gonna try to get organized and move my pantry, so that'll be another ordeal. Um, but those are my plans. Um, on the flip side of things, the city came through the cul-de-sac again. They're gonna be doing some road work, and they marked off that little ugly spot that they filled in that box with the black tar over the sidewalk. Yeah, they came and marked that, so I, I, I gather they're going to fix that because it's a real eyesore. <laughs> so thank goodness for that. He stopped by yesterday, and then they went and filled all the cracks in the cul-de-sac, which I didn't even know there was that many cracks. It didn't even look like it, but now you look out there and it just looks like nothing but cracks. Anywho, they filled all those, sealed the sides, vacuumed everything, so they're getting ready to recover um, all the roads in our neighborhood. So that ought to be a fun ordeal. Um, loud machinery. So I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot of that in the background for the next month. Because uh, they've got signs everywhere. No parking on the road. So I guess it's a 30 day thing because they're doing this huge block of our neighborhood. So, so I bet you'll be hearing all that. So anyway, um, that is it for the updates. And... Every Friday when I do a video for you, it's going to be mostly a discussion about prep tender, my progress. Let me know your progress in the comments below. Let me know your plans for prep tender. What are you going to do? Are you working on inventory? Are you getting organized? Are you gardening? Are you working on canning and adding more things to your shelf or shopping hauls or maybe you've got dehydrators or you know food dehydrators and you're drying your stuff out from your summer garden. This is the end of the summer gardens for most of you, so um, you've got to be harvesting a lot of things, and this is your busy season if you are in the north. <laughs> I'm in the south. It's busy season all year long, so, um, but most of you are, are getting really busy. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I, you have better growing season in the summer than I do here. Anyway, folks, let me know what your plans for prep timber are. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. If you haven't started following me on Instagram yet, you should. At JennyGoff18, I pretty much post daily what I'm up to around here, including hints to what's coming up, because I've posted lately a couple of my fall recipes. You won't be seeing the videos until later this month or November. Um, so I kind of post preview pictures of what's coming. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll definitely see what's coming up in the future. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.